quite speedy, ain't she? She's only doing 14. Yeah, tourist, huh? That there's two miles too fast, two miles too fast. What's your name? Hmm. Too, ain't you? Got your run board knocked off. Got your run board knocked off. Are you kidding? What kind of a burg is this? I don't know it. Listen, young fellow, in this community, we don't encourage speed. No, there's nothing else that's up to date. That's why I'm getting out of town just as soon as I get you broke in. Pretty little town. What's holding it back? Oh, the darn Civic League, that's what. Why, when the nine o'clock curfew rings, they take you in the sidewalk, they lock up the town like it was a jail. No late movies, no spooning in the park. No dancing? Why, you can't even buy a bottle of soda pop. Well, you're negotiating. But they ain't keeping me here. I've only got a few years left, and I'm going to spend them where I can get something out of life. There they go, headed for Bridgeport to spend their paychecks. 20,000 of them camp just outside of here with $21 a month to spend, and they go through this place like it had smallpox. Can't you do something about it? Not with old lady Snodgrass and her Civic League running this town. What's the Civic League? A bunch of blue-nosed, long hairs. It's too old and straight-laced to have any fun herself, so they don't want nobody else to have them. sample of your civic leaders. It's a crime in this town for kids to act natural. That's why we ain't had no marriages in two years. like her? Oh, we got a few exceptions. Now, you take Miss Polly lives next door. As prim and proper an old maid as you'd ever want to find. But there ain't a better like, more respected lady in the whole town. You don't say. Yes, I do say. She may not have made a success of her own life, but she don't go around trying to mess up nobody else's. There's Miss Polly. Get the mail there? Yes, Patsy, her companion and cook, and Slim Wilkins, the hired man. He's sort of a crazy inventor. Here's Slim on one of his inventions. What in the name of all get out is that thing? One of my new inventions. Cuts the grass, breaks the leaves, smokes out gopher. I'll show you. Thunder kind of contraption is this? Must be another one of Slim's inventions. Howdy, Wilbur. 
What do you think of my new burglar-proof mailbox? What in tarnation's it for? Sure nobody can read other people's mail. <laughs> Don't seem very burglar-proof to me. Oh, just open the door and try and take that letter out. Slim Wilkins, I'll have the law on you for disturbing the peace. Sorry, Mrs. Snodgrass. Just trying out another one of my new inventions. Yeah. Keep snoops out of other folks' mailbox. You keep out of this. You're a menace to the neighborhood. Well, if he's a menace, what do you call your concern Civic League? Wilbur Boggs, I'll have you fired if I have to take it up with the Postmaster General. Well, for once in your life, you ain't so smart. Because I'm retiring, as of this evening, pro bono publico. Or words to that effect. Until this evening, keep your mouth to yourself, you old fossil. Old fossil? Why you... Uh, oh, tweedle dee huh. Guess that's telling her. Let's get out of here. I've been working 30 years to get my pension, and I want to live long enough to spend it. with you and me oh spring always does this to me duty keeps saying go in go in go in <laughs> but this beautiful weather just won't let me isn't the air balmy today that's not the only thing that's balmy around here boy that was close well, what you doing puttering around with some flowers those are her prize zinnias She's going to enter them in the flower show. Gee, she might be out there for hours. Hours? But I've got to get back to work. I'll lose my job, and then we can't get married. Well, we can't get married anyway, Eddie. Yes, we can. You can sneak out tonight after she goes to bed. Oh, darling, we've been over all that. I love you and want to marry you, but, but I can't, and you know it. You can't stay tied to her apron strings all your life. It's no use, Eddie. I, I know I'll never be able to break away. Fiddlestick. Why doesn't Barbara assert herself before it's too late? Hmm. Okay, then, Babs. I'm going to get out of town and start all over again. Oh, Eddie, you don't really mean that. Yes, I do. I guess we might just as well forget the whole thing. You don't love me? Oh, hmm. Eddie, I do. Babs! <laughs> Mrs. Snodgrass, we really love each other. Not a word. Get into the house. You're going to be locked in your room until you've learned obedience. But, Mother, we were... You heard me go up to your room and stay there. Yes, Mother. Get off my property. If I ever catch you on it again, I'll have the law on you. Oh, dear me. I... What are you snooping around for? Well, I'm not snooping. I'm was just trimming the hedge for you. <laughs> huh. The Garber, it's high time he was calling to me. Come on in.
without any help from you. Oh, come out of there and unfix what you fix in the stove. And if anyone questions you, remember you never invented a thing. Well, what's all the excitement about? Are we going to have company? We're liable to. Lots of company. Any minute. Oh, dear, hurry, hurry. But do something. That... Now, look at this. Nothing works. Not this, this, not even the ovens, and she'll fix it. No wonder you couldn't work it. You forgot to turn on my new gas-saving safety device. Well, get it going. I'll go catch a chicken for lunch. wrong. Come with me. Oh. Well. Take a look at my prize flowers, my zinnias, my marigolds, my gladiolas. And that nitwit garden of yours is the cause of it all. With his idiotic contraption he calls an invention, he ruined my home and nearly asphyxiated the leading members of the Civic League. Oh, really? Oh, I mean, that's too bad. I I'm calling a meeting of the Civic League at the town hall at 3 o'clock this afternoon. And you better be there. Oh, what's the use of my coming? I always vote yes anyway. Huh. Someday I'm going to invent one of these things that really works. Oh, dear. Huh? You be at that meeting, because I'm bringing charges. I'm going to have you run out of town. And maybe you'll go with him. Slim, I'm ashamed of you. You really gonna let that old sourpuss bluff you out of town? Oh, it ain't her exactly. Is Polly in? Yes, come in, Eddie. I'll get her. 
You going away, too? Who? Who else is going? Me. I'm getting out of this town for good. What's this, Eddie? Why, you can't go away. What about Barbara? Oh, it's no use, Miss Polly. Barbara will never leave her mother. I thought you might help me to see her just once more so I can tell her goodbye. Oh, now, don't you be downhearted. Love will always find a way. I'll see if I can get her to sneak over. She'll never get out. Barbara. 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 Oh, Barbara. Eddie's over here and he wants to say goodbye to you. He's leaving town tonight. Oh, Miss Polly, no, he mustn't leave. I won't let him. Well, if you want to stop him, you better get over here quick. But how can I? Mother's got me locked in. Oh, dear. Really? I. Listen, that's all it's worrying you. I can get her over here in a jiffy. Love and Slim Wilkins laughs at locksmiths. Oh. Well, a Slim has a way of getting you out. Just sit tight until we're ready. All right. You can get her out. Sure. How? With my patent applied for Jiffy automatic eloping device. Uh-oh. Here we go again. <clears throat> What'll happen when Mrs. Snodgrass hears that thing go off? She won't hear it. I got that angle licked with this here silencer. Also takes the recoil out of the cannon. Are you sure it's safe? I invented it, didn't I? Answer the question. You don't need to act so scared. You won't even know when it goes off. Must have backfired a little. Oh, I wonder if Mrs. Snodgrass heard that. Yeah. Hooking out the windowsill, climbing that thing, and slide on down. Hurry! is about to open the window. It's now or never. Come on. Howdy, Mrs. Snodgrass. What are you up to now, you old meddler? Just to show you there's no hard feelings, I just rigged up to clean the owls out of your chimney. If there's any owls in my chimney, let them be. Owls in my chimney, indeed. This is the last straw. Instead of running him out of town, I'll have him jailed. Who? Slim Wilkins, that's who. Oh, come on now. Let's get out of here and let these young and say goodbye. I get shoo, it. Shoo. Come on, Slim. Well, I only wish she had more gumption. Well, I, for one, will keep on hoping. You know, there's many a slip twixt the cup and the lip. The cup and the lip. I wonder. Now what? You remember how Papa used to totter down the basement stairs to his secret wine cellar and then came bounding up three steps at a time, raring to go? Yeah. Well, he confided in me one day that what gave him that pep was out of a special secret bottle. Yeah. 
Well, you remember my sister Cadelia, don't you? She was just like Barbara, only more backward. Well, one day, she had sneaked a little drink out of the bottle and eloped with the butcher boy. And in her last letter, it tells me that she's just had her 17th child and is still going strong. But what's that all got to do with Barbara? If we could find just a little bit for Barbara, I'll bet she'd marry Eddie just like that. Come on. Well, I guess that's goodbye, Eddie. Goodbye, nothing. I've got my car parked outside. Everything packed and ready to go. We can be married in Bridgeport and on our honeymoon before anybody misses you. But when Mother does find out... Your mother. I'm marrying you, not your mother. Let's get away from this mildew town before we both go to sea. Yeah, it is pretty old-fashioned. This ought to do it. Stand back. I wouldn't trust him with a potato mash for much less an axe. Stand back. Give me room. Don't know my own strength. If we could only tell which is the special bottle. That's empty. That's only partly filled. It may be the very one. Here, you take this, Patsy. Bring a glass, Slim. Have you got a corkscrew? Here. Like this. I learned that by correspondence. Uh, do you mind drinking this slam? Well, uh, drinking's against my principles. Oh, but it's for a noble cause. Hmm. Does it give you sort of a warm glow? No. Does it make you feel like you're falling in love? No. Wrong bottle. Here, open this. And does it make your heart beat faster? Feels like it stopped altogether. No. There it goes again. Uh, does it make you feel amorous? How do you mean? Well, does it make you feel like you'd like to kiss Patricia? Do I have to? Tasted bad enough as it was. Wrong bottle. Come on, let's get some more. I want to take you somewhere where you can look as smart and be as beautiful as you really are. Now, what do you say, Barbara? And this time it's final. Eddie, I, I can't believe it's me talking, but, but I'm saying yes. Barbara! Eddie, you've got to get me back there. But Barbara, you just promised me. I can't do it, Eddie. I've got to get back up there before she finds out I've gone. Barbara! I might have known this was too good to be true. What's the meaning of this? Are you out of your mind? Look at yourself. Take that thing off immediately. Until you get over this silly infatuation, you won't get out of my sight. Everywhere I go, I'll take you with me. And I'll settle that precious any of yours once and for all. You know, I don't think you're pouring these drinks big enough. Maybe a good big one would do it. stuff's too old. It's lost its kick. Too old. Come Let's on. see if I can find it.
want to get the full effect. What do you mean, we? You're just wasting time, Miss Polly. Slim's right, the stuff's too old. We're going to think of some other way. Can't be the drinks. I'm all right. What happened to us? Huh? Oh. <laughs> you don't suppose she got hold of the right bottle? Very strange. I do, Miss Polly. Elm! You're beautiful. Huh? Who, me? What are you doing tonight? Who, me? Ma's taking me to prayer meeting. I know, but what are you doing after prayer meeting? <laughs> Have you seen Miss Polly? Have I seen her? <laughs> Who hasn't? We're on the right track. Uh oh, there she is. <gasps> oh, hello, neighbors. Hello. Look at that get up. And you. Joey, old kid. 
How are you, Miss Polly? Oh, you'd be surprised, you old devil. It's a great day for necking. Necking? That's what they call it today. Damping Joe Fry. Well, how long's this been going on? But Martha, you don't understand. I got eyes and ears, you old roo, you. Just wait till I get you home, and you'll hear about this at the meeting. Oh, careful, careful. Slim, we gotta stop. They say that bottle. do fellow civic leaguers is to purify the street corners of this fair city and abolish the sinful practice of young men ogling our girls as they pass by. An insidious infiltration has been boring from within this community consisting of the emission of a whistling sound vulgarly known as the call of the wolf perpetrated by puckering the lips and expelling the sound thusly. <whistles> All those in favor of making this offense a legal misdemeanor say aye. Aye. Contrarily opposed, signify by saying no. No! Well, I see you're all here. But whatever it is, it's still no. The young men have ever <whistles> at me, but I often wish they would. Disgusting. <laughs> oh. oh, thank you, boys. Thank you. <laughs> Miss Polly, you're making a fool of yourself. Get off this platform. Oh, fiddle fowl Minerva. I've got a few views myself about how this town should be run. In the first place, instead of passing laws that'll drive our young people out of town, we should pass a few that'll keep them here. Now you're talking. That's the first sensible idea I've heard at one of these fool meetings in 15 years. Oh. <laughs> yeah. We've got to get her out of here. If we could only sneak up close enough to grab her, leave it to me. Let's have fewer lights in the park. And uh, let's keep it open till 10 o'clock. And let them go to the movies without a chaperone. <laughs> so they can hold hands during the love scene. And let's give them more dances on Saturday night so that they can get into each other's arms once in a while. Why, you aren't doing anything to help them. And that's why there ain't been a marriage in this town for two years. That's right, isn't it, Mayor? Mayor Walsh, as chairman of this meeting, you will escort Miss Polly out of the hall. At once. Oh, Mayor, I said... Mrs. Snodgrass, as chairman of this meeting, I'm doing no such thing. What? I've been knuckling down to you for years, but I'm the mayor, and for once, I'm gonna be the mayor. It's time we heard somebody's views in this town besides yours. Uh, how about it, neighbors? Yeah, let Miss Polly talk. No. Well, don't be afraid of Miss Polly. We're for you, Miss Polly. You've got the right idea. Well, go ahead, Miss Polly. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor and Miss Snodgrass. <laughs> a little innocent lovemaking never hurt a youngster. I only wish I'd had more of it. Boy, is Miss Polly giving those civic leaguers a going over? Wow. Only let our young folks have 
fun in the open like they want to and not beat around the bush like we had to. What do you mean, like we had to? Why, you remember those hay rides we used to sneak out on, Joe Fry? Well, you ought to. You were the worst kissing bug in the crowd. Well, you remember they used to call you Mushy Fry, the lady-killing guy? <laughs> yeah, sure they did. Mushy Fry, the lady-killing guy. Ooh! Hi, I'm Mushy. How are you? went on those hay rides too, Henry, remember? You were sparking Millie Campbell, but she turned you down, so you married Angie there instead, just for spite. Mr. Mayor, I'm protesting. Our children are present, and we're respectable citizens. At least I am. You may be very proper now, Jim Pennywinkle, but you were the one who asked me to get off the hay wagon before we reached the fairgrounds, and I said no. I've often regretted that. Oh, but you got off with him, Elvira, and now you're Mrs. Pennywinkle. Oh, so I was second choice, eh? What's she digging up the past for? We're trying to settle the problems of today. Well, young folks today are the same as you was then, Orsina Wiggins. Remember the time you stayed all night at my house? <laughs> Sam Frisbee over there asked me to steal out for a walk in the moonlight. <laughs> but I wouldn't go. But you went. So, you took our moonlighting, did you? I'll moonlight you. You went sparking with that anemic old weasel? Well, I'm starting proceedings in the morning. And naming him as correspondent. You homewrecker. You calling me a homewrecker? Hmm. Why don't you tell your wife about that ice skating episode with Angie Turner three nights before your wedding when you said you was going on a business trip? You Tell me. And you won't have a hair left in your head, Angie Turner. You shut your mouth or I'll tell what happened at the husking bee between you and Sylvester Updike. And I can prove it by Tilly Moffat and Aloysius Dunphy, because we were both there at that disgraceful affair. I, I can explain all about that husking bee. Never would have happened nohow. Only Mushy Fry there, he's bite the cider. He's bite the cider. You and your temperance lectures. Oh. <laughs> And that's for the next thing I'm going to find out. I'll see you after the meeting, Mr. Frisbee. You won't be able to see nobody when I get through with you. Shut up, you old goat, you! You ain't heard the last of this, Jim Pennywinkle. Boy, I wouldn't have missed this. It's more fun than a circus. It's liable to end in a riot. <laughs> Order! Orsina, Angie, Henry, Jim, keep your seats and be quiet. Well, Miss Polly, I hope you're satisfied that you've said enough for one day. Well, about all I was going to say in conclusion was that if our girls don't start dressing up a little, the same thing is going to happen to them that happened to us. When Fifi, that cute little red-headed waitress, came to town and went to work at the station lunchroom, it wasn't long before she had all the sparking in town. And then, for some mysterious reason, she left just sudden-like. Oh, you were the station master then, Pop Parson. Why did she leave like she did? Well, I, I never intended to tell this, but if I have to... in the history of the Midville Civic League. Pandora, Polly, I don't know what truth or substance there is in what you've said about our other members, but I've lived here girl and woman for over 50 years, and you must admit not one breath of scandal has touched my name while I've been in this town. No, Minerva. While you lived in this town, you behaved right good. But what about that vacation we spent in 1911 at Kiyuki Lake? Why? Why? Pandora, Polly, you don't mean you'd tell. Well, I was just thinking about that starlit night when you paddled across the lake to Lover's Island with that big blonde sailor. He was a Marine. Oh. So, the head of our Civic League has never had a past. 
well. Not outside of the Marine Corps. <laughs> well, whatever he was, it was an awful night for me. Waiting for you from 8 o'clock till 9 o'clock, till 10 o'clock, till 11 o'clock, till... <laughs> Yeah, it's got some water. water. Get some water. Oh, water. I spilled it. Uh, any of your neighbors out there got any water? Don't use it all. I gotta have some of it analyzed. Yeah. Yeah. Drink this. Mother, are you all right? Why, of course I'm all right. And as for you folks, now that you've succeeded in scandalizing this meeting and disgracing yourselves, I've just got one thing to say. Why don't you sweet young things get married? Love is the most beautiful thing in the world. Don't you think so, Miss Polly? Well, I always thought so, Minerva. <laughs> Thank you.